Oh, no, no, no caroling. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> From your secret Santa. That sly son of a. Hey, what's up, Longo? Yo, Mikey, what's up, man? There's a uh, present on my bed here from a secret Santa. I mean, I know I'm reviewing your movie and everything, but you didn't have to get me anything else. What is it? Is it, is it a pony? Is it a YouTube intro? Um, I mean, that's great that you're reviewing my movie, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm not your secret Santa. Oh, uh, okay, well, yeah, no worries. Uh, happy holidays and all that stuff. Okay, man, uh, take it easy. <laughs> all right, man, I'll talk to you soon. And uh, just be careful of carolers. Uh, uh, okay, all right, la later. All right, take care. Weird. What is this? There's like nothing. Oh, come on! Not again! Ah! Season's greetings from Horrible. No matter what holiday you partake in this time of year, or if you're just like, fuck all that shit, one thing we can all come together and celebrate is the horror genre. And today we do that by unwrapping a review of the 2015 Christmas horror movie Secret Santa. No stocking stuffers, you already got an intro. Written, directed, and edited by our delightfully dope guest, Mikey McMurrin. Give talented and creative people more opportunities and resources. Secret Santa is a wildly entertaining surprise of a movie that succeeds in everything it sets out to do. At its core, it's a love letter slash throwback to the 70s and 80s B-movies, and this type of style is actually really hard to pull off well, but they really nail the visual and audio aesthetic of those old school movies. I think where this film really separates itself from other ones that try to do this, it delivers on the gore, it's got great characters, they're all super entertaining, this movie is really funny too. I really like the general concept, I think it's very fun and clever. All these college kids are having a holiday party where they're all getting these left these secret Santa gifts, and they end up being the weapons that they get killed with. All right, fun stuff. Now let's get to the breakdown. Ho, ho, ho. The movie starts with a literal cold open as two drunk girls, Jerry and Carissa, are treshing through the snow on the way home from getting kicked out of the bar. Despite the frigid conditions, Carissa does not have to worry about freezing to death because she is a hot mess right now. She threw up all over the bouncer. She can barely stand up. Son of a bitch! And once they get inside... Damn it. Eh, disgusting. So Jerry goes back to her room, gets undressed, and goes to take a shower. I really feel like the angles and the shot selection in these scenes really mimics the old school style very well that it's going for. There's a lot of times where this movie could very easily go gratuitous with the nudity and the sexual stuff, but it really doesn't. It shows a lot of restraint, and I respect that. It saves its gratuity for the gore. She gets out of the shower, and on her bed is a present from a secret Santa. She opens it, and it's... A power drink. Interesting gift choice. Jinx, show me a soda. Pops out into the hallway and asks if anybody's messing with her. Jump scare. Fake jump scare. It's just one of the roommates coming out of a, an office in the residential house of a bunch of college girls. You know what? It, not worth grinching about. Second, the roommate closes the door. Jerry's grabbed by some guy in all black with a ski mask on. Goes around the bed and turns the fucking cool radio up. Takes the power drill and just... Power drills her eye out. I! I! After some vintage opening credits, we check in with Carissa, who's played by Keegan Chambers, by the way. She's passed out on the floor. We're then introduced to one of our leads, Brian, played by Brent Bayard? By Bayard? Via douchey disrespect flex. <laughs> he walks up to the door to go pick up his girlfriend, Nicole, who we're introduced to in a freaking great way. Nicole is a cam girl, but doesn't tell anybody about it. Brian's timing interrupts her session as she has to scramble and end it real quick. I love the detail about how she's like, here's a refund, boys. She cares about her customers. I like that. Nicole was excellently played by Annette Wozniak. This is where a lot of horror movies tend to lose me sometimes because they stop being horror movies for a while. Secret Santa does not suffer from that problem, and a big reason is this movie's MVP, Dwayne. Dwayne's played by Jeff Almond. The scene is super funny. It's a little time jump recap about how Dwayne is not taking this class very seriously. And then it ends up in one of my favorite lines in the whole movie. Okay, 72 hour study session starts now. It's cumulative? We're then introduced to our last two soon-to-be Xmas party attendees. Professor Ramsey, played by Tony Nash. 
who basically just looks like if Roman Reigns never played sports and got straight A's. More like Roman Brains. Nailed it. And his TA, who he's having an inappropriate affair with, Olivia, played by Nicole Kowalez. Luckily for them, she's only his TA for three more hours, and then they can go public with their relationship. I can shout her from that rooftop right there as well. I do have the perfect fantasy for your first appearance together. Roman Ramsey reluctantly agrees, even though it's not his yard. Back at the house, Carissa can't find her straightener. She goes into Jerry's room. This scene is just an excuse to show the excellent aftermath Igor. Carissa on the phone with supposedly her significant other as she's saying she has a very special surprise for him. The plot thickens because holy shit, it's actually Brian. Olivia's doing TA stuff in Ramsey's office and searching through the drawers she finds a present which she assumes is for her, but it's the same wrapping paper as the present that was on Jerry's bed. Dwayne is very sleep deprived and he's sitting there getting ready to take the exam and he's not okay. You are freaking out. Man. Super useful scene with Carissa and Olivia really just uh, firmly establishes both of their personalities in a very quick, efficient manner. Nicole tries to tell Brian that she's doing the cam girl stuff and that she's doing it to pay off some debts. She's just a little nervous and it's awkward. She kind of can't really get it out. But bills never stop coming and she gets hit with some as soon as she walks in the door. So it's Naughty Nikki time. Welcome to cooking with Naughty Nikki. All Dwayne wants to do is sleep, but he can't do it in his dorm because there was like a bomb or some shit. And on his hunt for some Z's to catch, he runs into the three people that Brian hit with some melted snow in the beginning, and they turn out to be carolers looking for donations. Dwayne is still not okay, and he flips out, destroys the bell, and then feels very bad about destroying the bell. Oh god! What have I done? And, you know, I'm sure these carolers won't come back in a major way later or anything. Not ever. No way. Stoned in cold Steve Austin makes his way over to the girls' house, and they agree to let Dwayne sleep it off. Rome in Jerry's room, he'll be there for a while, we'll come back to him later. Quick well-shot scene of the man in black preparing his next deadly gifts. Brian had ignored Chris's call earlier, so apparently took it upon herself to go to his house and interrupt his bong toking session. Which is clearly something I would never endorse. Carissa is determined, and she offers the bride guy to retame her strange before the party. They have a back and forth about it, and results in Carissa threatening to tell Nicole, unless... You're a peach. Swindled. Hold on, go back. Is that a hurricane bong up there? That's a hurricane bong. I used to have one of those. Naughty Nikki is once again interrupted before the end of her session, this time by Olivia. Cut to the kitchen where Olivia is now making a smoothie out of all the vegetables that Nikki used. Classic comedy. The girls ordered some pizza and on his way out, the delivery guy notices some dude lurking through the windows. Let's call him Red for right now. He scares Red off and then gets back into his car to ironically then get sliced. This felt like a pretty realistic depiction of how a throat slit would actually go. Brian then arrives and he comes bearing gifts, a bottle of wine and a present. Check that wrapping paper. He's clear. He's clear! Okay, cool. There's awkward tension between Brian and Carissa. Olivia is also cooking, which sets up some great comedic stuff. Dwayne's up and feeling normal for... Dwayne, anyway. They all taste Olivia's cooking and realize it's shit, and Professor Ramsey arrives, and the reveal that he is Olivia's boyfriend goes about as awkwardly as you'd expect. I'm the guy. His attempts at small talk are not helping at all. Hey. Great work on that essay. After Olivia burns the casserole. We see a shot of someone switching out the bag of presents. Check back in with good old Red as he's sneaking into Nicole's room and doing a classic panty raid and sniff. Yep, pervert. They get the secret Santa party started. The first gift is to Brian. He opens it and it's a... Exactly what I asked for. A meat cleaver. This is confusing to everybody and they all kind of decide to put this on pause and up to this point I had no idea who the killer was going to be. Nicole finally works up the courage to tell Brian that she's doing the cam girl stuff. This scene does a really good job of making the conversation feel real realistic. Also though giving you great moments of comedic levity. Like when she shows them her tools of the trade. Is that a squash? Yeah. Yeah. Also why do you have a watermelon? What could you possibly use that for? Brian's not taking the whole thing super well so he runs out into the cold to have a heater. Carissa walks out and he starts to vent to her about the whole situation and she obviously sees this as a chance to pounce. And Brian goes back inside to reconcile with Nicole. They do a good job of making you go back and forth on disliking and liking Brian. And the gang gathers again for gift giving. This time it's Carissa's turn and she gets a, uh, old, gross blow dryer? Olivia wrapped the presents so Nicole asks, Do you think you made a mistake? Or, or were you just... 
drinking and rapping again? Thoughts you knew. I'm creeping up on the block, get a clue. Someone else opens their gifts. Dwayne has gardening shears. Olivia gets a carver. How that far? Check back in with our good old friend Herring, comma, Red. He's clearly just an obsessed fan of her cam girl persona. He then becomes true to his namesake as his entire face becomes covered in blood via head stab from the person in black. Dumbass. Jedi dumbass. Dumbass. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. <laughs> Before Nicole can open her gift, they're interrupted by some knocking at the door. The halls with oh, hey, it's the Kalers again. They just keep popping up, huh? <laughs> no. Carissa then hazards herself a plan to make Brian jealous, and she goes and starts hitting on Dwayne. Gotta love the self-awareness here. You know you're talking to me, right? Do you want to get late or not? Yes. And they fra la 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 like off into the bedroom. After Olivia denies the Carolers' donations, she goes into the kitchen and gets her present from Preston. Look at Dwayne and Chris are trying to fra la 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 fuck, but... Dwayne? Yeah? Is there a problem? Dwayne can't seem to get rock hard. Worst day ever! Olivia has to go to the bathroom, and this is where we say goodbye, because the killer's in there waiting for her, and her entire insides get carved the fuck up. Then cuts immediately to Ramsey as the movie tries to divert all suspicion towards him as he starts acting real weird about Nicole opening her present. Also, his small talk is not improved at all. Dwayne and Carissa... She's gonna fail my class. Carissa draws herself a hot bath, some awkward conversation in the living room, and they all wonder where Olivia is. Once they all split up and Ramsey's left alone, he shows his true colors. Back in the room, Dwayne Johnson finally turns to the rock, only for the killer to come in with the garden shears and, oh yeah. Who hangs dumb? It's brutal. Then there's what's not only my favorite kill in the movie, but probably my favorite scene. Like it really just embodies the tones that this movie's able to shift from moment to moment. The killer comes in and plugs in the previously foreshadowed blow dryer and... I seriously died laughing the first time I saw this scene. But Secret Santa is easily able to flip that switch from hilarious to vicious. Grabs the blow dryer, starts savagely bashing her face in with it. They even managed to squeeze in Nicole doing a callback joke and just fantastic practical effects. Still wondering where Olivia is, Nicole, Brian, and the professor are all discussing it as the professor kind of slips out the back. Then there's a big old thud. They investigate the thud only to find the professor standing over Olivia's body holding the carver. Instinctively they think he's the killer and they take off, but if they use their brains they'd realize it couldn't be him because we all know that's not how he spears people. The only problem is when they get to the car, there is a bloody knife in the seat, and now all of a sudden Nicole does not trust Brian. She runs inside and locks him out. It's like desperately banging on the window trying to get her to let him in, and then he gets tackled by the guy in the black, and then he gets... That is a man. Head. Don't worry, Brian guy, you still got a bright future as a horseman. She runs into the kitchen, all the knives are gone. Oh, fork me. Ramsey pops up for a second and then he gets taken out real fast. And there are two people in black. Nicole's trying to fight him off with the fire poker. She does some final girl shit, gets away, stabs one of them through the stomach with the fire poker. But all shit, down the entrance ramp comes a third person in black, knocks Nicole down. Right before she passes out, we get the POV reveal of the killers and it's... The Carolers. She awakens tied to a chair, and this ends up being one of my favorite gags in the whole movie. She naturally asks, why are they doing this? This is the question my man's been waiting for his entire life. You really want to know? It was Christmas, 1987. My brother Tommy got what he wanted. Why couldn't I? Black Christmas, you would die It's such a good play on the evil motivation monologue trope. Because honestly, at the end of the day, it really doesn't fucking matter. That is by far the most stupid fucking reason to kill anybody. They realize May, the one that got stabbed, didn't May kit. They're unfazed. Ah, oh, jeez. She bled out. Poor man just to break free and she kills the older woman by stabbing her in the stomach and then classic chase scene ensues. <laughs> Score one point for Nicole. 
They take turns getting the upper hand until the caroler, whose credited name is Clay and is played by assistant director Matthew Chisholm, is able to not only get a stab in on Nicole's stomach, but also gets in a nice Matthew Lillard reference. I've always had a thing for you, Nazi Nikki. Never alone! <laughs> Nicole manages to grab the fire poker and stab him through the stomach, evening the score once again. Clay's just kind of like, shit. All right, well, I'll catch you later, chick. So one year later, Nicole's getting dropped off by a friend. She can't go out because she has work to do. And that work, the legacy of Naughty Nikki lives. She's getting ready and setting up. She doesn't realize she has a live audience member as Clay has found her and is ready for a rematch. And he apparently just got off comedy improv class. Except when he goes to strike, Nicole uses a classic Laurie Strode tactic. Oh, shit. Nicole's actually under the bed with a little chainsaw, saws his fucking foot off, and then not only ends him, but the movie. Merry Christmas, motherfucker! <laughs> I guess I'll never get to star in that spin-off sitcom It's Always Sunny in Montreal. And that was Secret Santa. This movie instantly became one of my favorite movies that I ever just threw on and went into blind, and also one of my favorite holiday movies. Above all the really well done comedic bits and all the very entertaining kills and practical effects, a lot of love, care, and detail went into making this movie, and that's something I look for above everything else. Speaking of which, a stuffed stocking full of gratitude goes out to Mikey for taking the time out to be in my video, and if you like this movie or you just want to support super talented people, you should really go check out his latest movie, The Final Ride. You can actually watch it for free right now with Prime ads of this recording. So go do that. Okay, okay. Do, it. No, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. If you want me to review that movie, let me know. And most importantly, I hope everyone has a happy and safe holiday. And if you don't, well, that would be horrible.